Now, just because the show is in it doesn't mean that the conversations have to end about this incredible groundbreaking show on HBO, Lovecraft Country. And that's what I'm doing today. As you can see from the title of this video, this is my top 10 episodes of season one of Lovecraft Country. Let's get into this list. Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot here today to share with you all my number 10, all the way up to my number one episode of season one of Lovecraft Country. So excited to share my list with you all in this video. But before we dive into the list, as you can see on the screen now, make sure you're following me on all my other social media accounts. That way you all can stay up to date on what's going on over here at Movie Files. If you are new to this channel, welcome to Movie Files. Make sure you all do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my other TV coverage movie reviews live streams all the fun things we do on this very channel make sure you all give this video a thumbs up really helps out the algorithm and helps out the channel but I also really appreciate it and in the comments just because this is my list doesn't mean you can't share your list so give me your number 10 all the way to number one and if you want to you can give me your reasons as well let's have a fun discussion in the comments below so I did a video like this a couple months ago it was my top five favorite moments of the first half of Lovecraft Country and I might do another video pertaining to that uh, but this one is a top 10 list of the season. So this is subjective. It doesn't mean if my number 10 is your number one, doesn't make me even better or you even better. It's just a subjective list. So again, share your list below and let's just have a good time. So with that being out of the way, let's jump right into this list. Coming in at number 10 is episode two, Whitey's on the Moon. Now look, this episode has some incredible moments. I mean, number one, Uncle George, the death of Uncle George, which still haunts me to this very day. We get the introduction of characters like William and Christina. We learn about our hero's fears. We meet the sons of Adam. We get all that great stuff. But ultimately, the reason this comes in at number 10 for me personally, I felt an introduction to magic to this new show felt a little rushed and underdeveloped. And also too, I'm not gonna lie, when you look at the episode, it felt more like a season finale versus an episode two. And those are the reasons why this comes in at my number 10 on my list. Coming in at number nine is episode four, A History of Violence. Now look, seeing black people having this story being told on the, on the screen was so incredible. Indiana Jones meets National Treasure, meets the Goonies was such a fun time. Had a lot of fun with this episode. But the handling of characters like Yahima, which Misha Green has come out and agreed with the handling of the character was pretty poor. The fact that really nothing came out of D and Hippolyta going back to Artem and having their questions answered really kind of rubbed me the wrong way again I had a lot of fun with this episode but as an episode goes it just wasn't as cohesive as the others and that's why it's coming in at my number nine coming in at number eight is the season finale episode 10 full circle now i have seen this episode a total of three times now and i've definitely come around to this episode more so than i did my first two viewings and don't get me wrong this finale has some incredible moments number one obviously tick dying mantra trying to wake up his son Montro's getting the letter from his son seeing my favorite characters reclaiming the book of names and also hashtag gia came through in the clutch but to me this felt more like a good finale that opened opens the door for more seasons like D and George being the next generation of heroes but for me personally it didn't feel like a satisfying conclusion for this individual season coming in at my number seven is episode eight Jigabobo now, I know a lot of people love the creepy, topsy girls, and I've definitely come around to those characters, and having moments like Dee slapping back and clapping back at Detective Lancaster really made the episode kind of fun in that sense. But it does come down to the emotional aspects of this episode that really resonated with me, seeing the presence of the death of Emmett Till, feeling so authentic, Letitia fighting off those bullets flying across her face, the incredible moment that we get with Tick with his creature at the end of the episode, and seeing the creature rip apart those policemen again the episode has so many incredible moments and when it comes down to it i don't have many flaws with this episode outside of maybe a little bit more explanation of why christina decided to have herself be beaten and killed in the same way that emma till died and i get that it was her way maybe connecting to ruby but i wish it was explained a little bit more and that is why it comes in at my number seven on my list coming in at number six is episode seven i am now this was such a great episode for Hippolyta, reclaiming her name, going through space and time, and Angelou Ellis was fantastic in this role, and I really enjoyed her journey. I will say my only criticism with the episode does fall within the episode not really having consequences for Dee and Hippolyta going back to Artem, but minus that little flaw, I Am was an incredible episode. So we're now approaching my top five episodes. Make sure you all are leaving your 
your comments below with what your top episodes are of this first season. Coming in at number five is episode three, Holy Ghost. Now this episode to me cemented Letitia Letty Lewis as my favorite character. That scene with her in the basement with the ghost that won her to Emmy. That, to me, was just such one of the most powerful moments of this season. Such a great performance by Journey Smollett, and I love that moment in the basement. And as I said in my review for that episode, I love a good haunted house story. Seeing ghost designs were on point. Letty going to work with that baseball bat, and also, let's remember, this was the episode that maybe baby George was conceived, so it's a very important episode as well. And for those reasons, that's why episode three, Holy Ghost, comes in at my number five episode on my list. Coming in at number four is episode five, Strange Case. Now, this episode to me is where this show won the best visuals of 2020. Those metamorphosis scenes with Ruby reminded me so much of an American werewolf in London meets the fly. Those body horror moments were so incredible. Seeing her journey and her complexity of this character really shine through. And let's not forget the performance by Wumi Moshaku. She bodied that role. And then we can't forget Michael K. Williams literally saying maybe one or two words. Him having his coming out party was such a beautiful thing to see on the screen. And that is why this episode is my number four on my list. Coming in at number three is Rewind 1921. Time traveling back to 1921 was incredibly powerful. The only negatives I may have within this episode is seeing Tick maybe handling and learning about Uncle George being his dad. Just didn't feel like, it felt kind of rushed. I wish there was more time within that scene, but minus that one thing, this might have been the most powerful episode of television I've seen all year. Hattie making the ultimate sacrifice to save her future family versus her immediate family and burning alive and seeing the violence that took place in Tulsa in 1921. Again, you talk about powerful moments, seeing black stories being told in this matter. Misha Green and crew did such a fantastic job. And again, that back half of that episode wrecked me emotionally. I love this episode for the moments that we get within that back half. Sure, there was some mishandling at the beginning, but this was a fantastic episode of television. And that's why 19, Rewind 1921 comes in at my number three. Now, coming in at number two on my list is Meet Me in Daegu. Now, this may surprise a lot of you all, but for me personally, when I think about from beginning to end, this to me was the strongest episode. I love this love story, and I mentioned all the women in the show were incredibly incredible actresses and they killed their roles but Jamie Chung is on that list as well as Gia she was fantastic and I'm not gonna lie I'm come I'm coming around the idea that don't shoot me but I think when it comes to Letty and Tick relationship versus Gia and Tick I might say that they had a little bit more chemistry, man. It was so fascinating to see Tick showing this other side of Tick, right? The darker side, but also seeing him fall in love for the first time. And again, from the beginning all the way to the end, this was the most like straight narrative kind of confined episode. And I thought it was just a beautiful love story at the end of the day. And that's why it's coming in at number two on my list. So before I share with you all my number one episode of this season, make sure you all have liked this video, share this video, comment your list in the comment section, hit that bell so you don't miss any of my other videos. Of course, subscribe to the channel. And now with that being out of the way, let me share with you all my number one episode of season one of Lovecraft Country. Coming in at my number one spot is episode one, Sundown. This to me is a perfect example of how important it is to have a great pilot slash premiere episode because you remember what this episode did. It got people talking. No matter how you feel about this show as a whole, there is no denying how hook this first episode got myself and got you all involved in this TV show. And I think this pilot episode really truly defines what Lovecraft Country was. From that opening scene of Aliens, Cthulhu, Jackie Robinson to all the craziness going on, then meeting our characters Tick, Uncle George, Letitia, Ruby, Dee, Hippolyta, is such great world building. But then as you're thinking, okay, this show has monsters, it has aliens, and you're thinking those are the creatures, those are the villains, those are the monsters of the show. No, 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 no. We're in 1950s Jim Crow era, and the racism is the true horrors and the true monsters of the show. And that first episode really kind of tells us what this show was all about. And at the end of the day, to me, this was one of the best pilot episodes I've ever seen. And that is why episode one, Sundown, is my favorite episode of Lovecraft Country. 
So there you have it. That is my number 10 all the way down to my number one episode of the first season. Hopefully more episodes and more seasons to come of Lovecraft Country. But thank you guys for watching this video. And also, I cannot go without saying thank you to the incredible cast and crew of Lovecraft Country and also the incredible, talented showrunner, Misha Green. Thank you for giving us this groundbreaking show. Thank you all for watching this video. Make sure you leave your list below. Like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell so you don't miss any and my other videos. I may have another surprise video for you all pertaining to Lovecraft Country. Hope you all are staying safe and we'll see you in the next video.